If you go into the app store and search for to-do list apps, you'll find hundreds of options. And trust me, I've tried a lot of them over the years. Problem is they're either too complicated or way too basic. But with all of the changes and improvements that Apple has made over the years, I actually think the Stock Reminders app strikes a really good balance between the two. Of course, like any app, you need to know what you're doing to get the most out of it. So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 tips to help you get more from the Reminders app. Okay, let's get into it. You can add tags when creating a new reminder, which makes it much easier to organize and find your tasks later. When you're creating a new reminder, you'll see a tag icon in the middle of the menu bar just above the keyboard. Tap on this and you can either select an existing tag if you've already created some or create a new one by typing it in and hitting return. The reminder that you create will now be tagged with whatever tag you just selected. Once you've done this, head back to the main screen of the reminders app and at the bottom, you'll see a section called tags. Tapping on any of your tags will bring together all reminders that use that tag, even if they're stored across different lists. There are a couple of different ways that this can be useful. You could use tags as a way to bring order to a chaotic reminders list. Maybe you don't like using folders and prefer to just keep one long list of reminders. Tags can help categorize them without needing to move things around. Or you could use tags to add extra layers of organization to existing lists. For example, I've got a watch list where I keep track of all the films and TV series that my wife and I want to watch. Instead of creating separate lists, I could use tags like film, TV, Netflix, Apple TV to quickly filter the list based on what we're in the mood for. You can add sections to a list, which is a great way to organize reminders visually. To do this, open your list and tap the menu in the top right corner, then select new section. A new section will be created and you can give it a name. For example, I might create a section called Apple TV or a section called Movies, and then I can add specific reminders to those sections. This way I can keep everything in one main list while still having more control over how it's organized and categorized. Oh, and one more thing to mention on the topic of sections. If you go into your today list in the reminders app, you'll notice that your tasks are automatically categorized into morning, afternoon, and tonight. This list will also automatically create additional sections for overdue reminders and all day tasks. If you wanna change the order of these sections, you can do that. Just tap the menu in the upper right corner and choose edit sections. While you can't edit or remove the morning, afternoon and tonight sections, you can tap and hold to drag them into a different order, helping you to organize your today list in a way that works best for you. Do you ever watch these tips videos and think, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If so, you should definitely check out the brand new training portal that I've just launched, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than a hundred tips for the iPhone, with another hundred being added over the next few weeks, covering every aspect of your iPhone. Each module contains lessons, and each lesson contains a tutorial video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can work through each lesson in order, or you can pick and choose what you want to learn at any given time. There's no ads, no sponsors, just content, and you can access it on your iPhone or your tablet or your home computer. Plus, no monthly subscription. This is a one-time only payment with lifelong access to all of the content, including all future updates. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description of this video iOS 18 introduced integration between the Reminders app and the Calendar app. And the great thing about this is that it's enabled by default. You don't have to set anything up. If you like it, you can use it. And if you don't, you can just ignore it. To create a reminder that appears in your calendar, simply add a date and time when setting up the reminder. For example, if I create a reminder to call someone, I can go into the details section and make sure that I've added both a date and a time. Once the reminder is created, I can go into my calendar. And if I look at that specific date and time, I'll see the reminder appearing in the calendar app exactly where I wanted it. If I tap on the reminder in calendar, I can see more details about it. And there's a show in reminders link. If I tap on that, it will take me directly to the reminders app. I can also complete the reminder directly within the calendar app by tapping the checkbox next to it to confirm that I've completed the task. This also works in reverse. In calendar, I can tap the plus button in the upper right corner and select reminder from the options at the top. I can then fill out the missing details and create a reminder directly from the calendar app, which will then also appear in the reminders app. 
You probably already know that when you create a new list in the Reminders app, you have the option to set it as a shopping or grocery list. This automatically categorizes the items that you add into different sections, just like they'd be arranged in a grocery store. Your phone does this based on your geographical region and local language. But if you often shop in stores where different languages are used, or if you buy products that require different languages, the Reminders app lets you customize this setting. To adjust this, go to Settings, scroll to the bottom and tap Apps. Then scroll down and tap Reminders. At the very bottom of this list, you'll see a section called Grocery Categorization tap on add language. By default, this is set to automatic, meaning it categorizes groceries based on your location and language settings. But if you want more control, you can disable this setting, then tap languages underneath. From here, you can select additional languages that you want the Reminders app to recognize. This means that when you add grocery items in a different language, they'll still be categorized much more accurately in your shopping list. If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. One of the more overlooked features of the Reminders app is the ability to create list templates. The idea is that if there's a particular list that you use over and over again, instead of creating it from scratch every time, you can simply save it as a template and reuse it whenever you need it. A great example of this is a packing list. If you're going away for a weekend trip, chances are you pack the same things each time. So instead of manually writing out a list for every trip, you can create a packing list template and reuse it whenever you need it. Here's how to do it. First, create the list as normal. Tap add list. And in this example, I'll call it packing template. Once I've named it, I'll press done at the top of the screen, then start adding all the items that I want included in my packing list template. When I'm happy with the list, I'll tap the menu in the upper right corner and choose save as template. I'll save it as packing template, then delete the list from the reminders app since I no longer need the template itself as an active list. Now, the next time I need a packing list, I'll tap add list. And instead of creating a new one from scratch, I'll tap templates at the top of the screen. From here, I'll select packing template, rename it, maybe calling it March trip, for example, and then press create. Once that's done, my new packing list will appear in reminders, complete with all of the original items from my template. Of course, I can add or remove items as needed, but this is a really quick and easy way to reuse the same list whenever I need it. When creating a new list in the Reminders app, you might have noticed that in the list type field, you can change the setting from standard to smart list. A smart list is a list where you define a set of criteria and any reminders that match those criteria will automatically be added to that smart list. To set this up, tap edit filters and you'll see a range of filter options that you can choose from. Here are a couple of practical ways that you might use this. You could go into tags and set up a smart list so that any reminders with a specific tag are automatically added to this list. Or you might create a smart list based on date. For example, I could create a list called next week then go into date, choose relative range, and set it to in the next one week. This would give me a quick and easy way to see all my upcoming reminders for the next week without getting bogged down by anything else. You can also create smart lists based on time, location, flag and priority level, specific lists, which you can include or exclude. At the top of the screen, you'll also see an all option. If you tap on this, you can choose whether the smart list should include reminders that match all of the filters you've set or any of them. Smart lists are really easy to set up. Let me give you a few examples of useful ones that you might want to create. You could create a smart list called urgent, select the priority filter and set it to high. Now, every time you create a reminder and set the priority to high, it will automatically be added to this list. You could create a smart list that pulls in all of your overdue reminders. Go into the date filter, choose today and toggle on include overdue reminders. This will quickly collect all of your overdue tasks in one list. If you're good at tagging or flagging reminders, but sometimes forget, you can create a smart list that only shows reminders that haven't been tagged or flagged. This way you can easily find any tasks that might need additional organization. On the subject of smart lists, there was a really important feature missing in iOS 17, and that was the ability to properly work with subtasks inside of a smart list. To show you what I mean, I've created a smart list and then added a reminder that's been placed inside that list. When creating the reminder, if you scroll to the bottom of the reminder page, you'll see an option called subtasks. 
If you tap on this, you can then add additional sub reminders within the main reminder. This is really useful for more complex tasks where you need to complete multiple steps. The problem in iOS 17 was that even if you added subtasks to a reminder, you couldn't actually see them inside of a smart list. But in iOS 18, this has been fixed. So now in iOS 18, when you create a reminder with subtasks, you'll see that the main reminder appears inside the smart list. And next to it, you'll see a blue text label indicating that there are subtasks. If you tap on that blue text, it will link you directly to the reminders list where that reminder is stored with the subtasks expanded, allowing you to easily work through them and check them off as needed. This is a pretty minor tip, but I'm including it because it can actually make a really big difference in how you organize and manage your lists. When you create a new list, you'll notice that an icon is automatically assigned to it at the top. As you scroll down, you'll see a selection of preset icons to choose from, but they're all monotone and a bit boring. But at the top left of the icon selection screen, there is a smiley face icon. If you tap on this, you'll unlock access to the entire emoji keyboard, meaning that you can choose a much brighter, more colorful icon to sit at the top of your list. And if you wanna change the icon for an existing list, just tap into the list, open the menu in the top right corner and select show list info. From there, repeat the same steps to swap in an emoji of your choice. One of the most frustrating things missing from the Reminders app has always been the ability to add voice or audio recordings to Reminders. I talked about this in a previous video where I shared a workaround. You create a voice memo in the Voice Memos app, you add that voice memo to a note and then attach that note to a reminder. Thankfully, in iOS 18, you can now skip an entire step because you can record audio directly into the Notes app. This makes it much easier to create reminders with voice memos attached. Here's how you do it. First, open the Notes app and create a new note. Give the note a name, then tap the paperclip icon in the menu bar just above the keyboard. Next, select Record Audio. Press the Record button, start recording whatever you want to attach to your reminder. Once you're done, tap Pause, then tap Done. And now your note with an audio recording has been created. To turn this into a reminder, tap the Share button at the top of the note and select Reminders from the list. This will hopefully let you create a reminder that links directly to the note. Now, the reason I say hopefully is because this doesn't always work. Sometimes the option to create a reminder directly from notes isn't available. If that happens, there is a workaround. Go back to the main notes page where you can see all of your notes. Tap and hold on the note for a second, then start dragging it around the screen. With your other hand, open the Reminders app, navigate to the list where you want to add the note and simply drop it in. You'll see that the reminder has been created with a notes icon on the right. And if you tap on that, it will take you straight to the notes app where you can play the attached voice memo. You probably already know that you can share a list with someone else. To do this, go into the reminders list that you want to share, tap the share button at the top and choose the person that you'd like to share the list with. You can send them the link via messages, for example, and once they tap the link in the message that they receive, they'll be added as a participant on that list. From that point on, any changes either of you make will be updated in real time. The most obvious use case and the way that I use this is for a shared shopping list with my wife. This allows both of us to add items to the list whenever we need, and it also means that whoever is at the store can check the latest version of the list and buy everything that we need. But did you know that you can also assign specific tasks within a shared list to a specific person? So if you go into a shared list and tap on a specific reminder, you'll notice a person icon appear in the menu just above the keyboard. Tapping on this will show a list of everyone collaborating on the list. You can then select the person that you want to assign the task to. That person will receive a notification telling them that they've been assigned a task. And on their main reminders screen, they'll now see an assigned list, which they can tap into to see all of the tasks assigned to them. So there you go, 10 tips for the Reminders app. And I bet there was at least a few in here that you didn't know. What do you think? Anything that I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.